it's not just about having a nice product or service. It's about offering something that truly creates value for your customers. After this video, you'll be able to design your value proposition for your target group. Let's look at an example, Airbnb. What's their offering? Well, the core of their offering is a website for finding and booking accommodations from homeowners. And there are some additional offerings like payment, profiles, reviews and help desk support. But what's the value proposition? The value proposition is a community marketplace where people can promote and book homes. To understand why an offering creates value, we need to understand the customer. We have to understand what the customer needs and wants. That's what we call the customer job. In our example, the job of the customer is finding and booking a place to stay. The needs are, does he need a booking for himself or for his family? Does it need to be in Paris, New York or London? This is followed by the wants. Does he want comfort, low costs, efficiency or entertainment? The job takes place in a certain context. For instance, is the customer behind his computer or on his mobile phone while booking? The context in which the customer has a job to be done can be quite diverse. And I'll come back to you why this context is important. So now we understand what the job the customer wants to have done. Doing such a job can create pains or gains. Now pains are anything that annoys a customer when getting a job done. In our example, the main pain is that it's so difficult to find the right holiday home for the right price. Gains are anything that makes the customer happy, that he dreams about. In our example, the main gain is the joy of finding a nice, affordable holiday home. So how do we know if our offering creates value? Well, if the offering creates gains or it relieves pains, it's a valuable offering. In our example, Airbnb's main offering promises exactly that. The website helps to make the customer's dream of finding a nice, authentic place to stay come true. And it relieves his nightmare of having to browse through loads of websites before finding one. Or, well, that is Airbnb's intention to do so. That's why it's called a value proposition. It's a proposal from the provider. But there can be two major problems in making the value proposition work. First, there might be a mismatch with the who of the business model, the understanding of the customer. If you don't understand that the customer, what the customer really wants and expects, then there is a gap between the intended value proposition and the value that the customer expects. Maybe you expect that the customer will use the booking website from his home with plenty of time, but the customer expects to have it when in the city on his mobile phone. Now then, if the website doesn't really work very well on that mobile phone, the value proposition doesn't deliver the expected value for the customer. And this is why the next video of this blog will be all about understanding the who of the business model. The second problem has to do with the how of the business model. Maybe you have the good intention to build a website that works on any mobile phone, but the technology just isn't good enough. Or your supplier didn't do a good job when building the mobile app. Well, in that case, there is a gap between the value proposition on paper and the actual value proposition delivered in practice. And this is why we stress the how of the business model in block three of this course. So now, to summarize. Your value proposition is about how your offering creates value for customers. It's about making your customers' dreams come true or preventing his nightmares from happening. Let's take a design approach. What are your customer's job? What are his pains and gains? How can your offering create gains or relieve pains? We'll practice with that this week using a practical tool, the Value Proposition Canvas.